Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for inviting me to this seminar. I am Sofia Remoreki, as I said. I'm a postdoctoral scientist in marine heatwave research. And today I would like to share with you some results, key results and challenges of our work in future marine heatwaves. Okay. So as already stated, our research in marine heatwave is motivated by the widespread events uh, the widespread effects of marine heat waves, uh, which can be detected with different methods. But our main point for today will be to discuss the different ways with which we have experimented in order to increase our ability to predict, project, or forecast, if you want, the marine heat waves, and of course, the challenges that come with this. So, as Hilary already stated, uh, marine heat waves are extreme warm events, just to summarize again, that uh, these are events that threaten marine ecosystems, marine independent societies, fisheries, aquaculture, industry, anywhere in the global ocean they can occur. And this figure here is from the uh, latest IPCC 2019 report, which shows a lot of intense marine heat waves occurring around the globe in the past decades. From these events, we learned that marine heat waves can be regional, but can also span thousands of kilometers in space with a duration from days to even years, while they can also penetrate deeper in the ocean so that the surface expression that we are seeing is really just the tip of the iceberg. And from this study, uh, we also see that most of these events occurred most likely due to anthropogenic climate change. So uh, the question now is, how can we improve our ability to forecast or at least to anticipate that a marine heat wave will occur in a certain area in the future? So first of all, the research question is what determines all the steps of marine heat wave analysis. And therefore, there is no right or wrong way of approach. Perhaps often there can be more suitable ways of thinking or decisions than others. For example, Depending on the research question, many different decisions can be made for the extreme temperature threshold based on which we define marine heat waves, or for the reference climatology, or even for the spatial temporal extent of a marine heat wave, as Hilary showed earlier. So that means that the events that we will be looking to identify or forecast in the future depends on the marine heat wave definition and to the extent to our marine our research questions. Once we agree on what we call a marine heat wave, we are ready to take our next subjective choice on how we will predict events like that in the future. And here we have experimented first with model projections on the characteristics of future marine heat waves in the Mediterranean Sea. And then we decided to test a different statistical approach of marine heat wave drivers or the physical processes that create the marine heat waves. And we tried to do that in many different regions of the global ocean. I know it looks a bit overwhelming, but I will just explain. So in the first case, in the case of the Mediterranean Sea, we worked with uh, temperature projections and we needed a lot of different models, climate models and temperature outputs that were under different greenhouse gas emission scenarios. That way we were able to cover two aspects of what we call the climate uncertainty. That is the fact that we do not know exactly how the future will be, so to be as close as possible to the future reality, we need to take into account all the uncertainties related to first the, the different representation of the climate system provided by different models, B, the different possible evolution of temperatures uh, in the planet and that is estimated, that is given by different greenhouse gas emission scenario. And third, the actual natural variability, which we did not specifically address here. And so for the, for the study of the Mediterranean Sea marine heat waves, we used six high resolution regional climate models that were available at that time. And from these models, we took the sea surface temperature output uh, that was under different simulations. And these simulations were six, uh, simulations of six present day scenario, five uh, future pessimistic and intermediate scenario, uh, intermediate warming scenario, and one optimistic warming scenario. And we were looking for events for the Mediterranean Sea that would be above the average present day most extreme SSD. So basically we're looking from 2005 and 2100 and we were trying to see um, how many marine heat waves and how much more intense or more longer 
uh, this would be compared to the present day event. And the way that we try to picture that is uh, this map here, which is a bit overwhelming, but I will explain. We did a comparison between, we first identified the present day and the future marine heat waves with all these different models we had and under the different scenario. And we found that the marine heat waves in the Mediterranean will become stronger and more intense with higher emission scenarios. In each of these plots here, uh, we show the total number of marine heat waves identified by all the models in three times periods, the present period or the 1976-2005, the mid 21st century of 2021-2050, and the end of the 21st century. Each of the small boxes here, which are colored, uh, show the number of events that were found to be characterized by a specific duration and intensity range. And these results here suggest that relative to the present day period, the range of marine heat wave intensity and durations increase following the greenhouse gas emission scenario. And that means that higher values, high or more intense or stronger events come with a more pessimistic global warming scenario where we have durations of up to 170 days and intensities of up to even 3.8 degrees at the end of the 21st century. Here, the most extreme events of what we call the present day simulation, they appear to become more common in the future under the intermediate global warming and pessimistic global warming scenarios, and even more severe than the, the very well known and devastating Mediterranean marine heat wave of 2003, which is uh, shown here, is indicated for comparison with the red box. And this event, uh, which was observed. It, the, these are the characteristics of this of, uh, marine heat wave 2003, appears to actually become the new normal towards the end of the 21st century. Under the most uh, optimistic global warming scenario, the RCP 2.6, there seems to be a slight increase in marine heat wave signature with time, but still the intensity and duration are lower than the other two ones, the intermediate and pessimistic scenario. So one way to project future marine heat wave is to decide on the appropriate extreme temperature threshold and search how often and where these events might occur in the future relative to the present. And that was uh, for the Mediterranean Sea. However, as in this study, we based our marine heat wave projections on variations and characteristics of future extreme SSD. For the global scale study we are doing right now, we use a different approach. We focused on marine heat waves relative um, to the 90, what we call the 90th quantile of temperature. And we used different data sets from before. We used the reanalysis data set and decided this time to look beneath the surface. So this schematic here, uh, it shows the mixed layer depth, as Hilary already mentioned before. These are the first tens to 100 meters of the ocean uh, where they are in contact with the atmosphere and the temperature is sort of homogenized. Inside this layer, we are interested in analyzing the possible heat sources and sinks that can change the mixed layer temperature and possibly lead to marine heat wave. So the idea is to use a theoretical equation, it's just mathematics here, that, um, which is called the mixed layer heat budget. And this equation is basically relating changes of the mixed layer temperature with all the different physical processes which can either add or remove heat from the mixed layers, such as the horizontal or vertical flows, the atmosphere heat fluxes. And we did that in order to identify dominant heat contributor, that is the dominant driver for every morning heat wave in a certain area. And then from there, the statistics of the dominant drivers based on main events, we can use them and get a good idea of what physical processes are more likely to drive morning heat waves in a certain region for a certain uh, season and therefore improve event predictability. But just to begin with, just taking a closer look on how we decided to analyze and picture a marine heat wave. A marine heat wave can be this uh, beautiful period here, which can be split in an onset uh, period, which is a start, represents the start until the day the marine heat wave reaches its maximum temperature anomaly. 
and a decay period from the peak of the event up, up to the end of it. So we investigated the local physical processes during these phases for all the events identified between 1993 and 2000 in many different regions around the world. But just for an example here, I will talk about the Northwest Atlantic. For instance, we took this whole region of Northwest Atlantic, Atlantic, we split it in four degree by four degree boxes. And we said, okay, uh, each box is going to be treated as a separate region where marine heat waves occur due to their own local ocean and atmosphere conditions. Then all these events are first identified, then their characteristics and dominant drivers were pulled together and statistically examined for different seasons. These techniques allowed us to account for small scale processes who otherwise wouldn't be able to be considered if we were taking into account larger areas or larger events. And this is just an example of our results, which shows when and where the marine heat waves are happening in, in each season, what are the dominant drivers? So to the first order, all of the different processes that were described by the previous equation, all of these seven, eight uh, terms of the equation are able to drive or a marine heat wave and can be further grouped in four groups of physical mechanisms, basically. The heat that comes from air sea exchanges, the heat that comes from horizontal flows, the heat that is a result of entrainment, so it's like vertical abstraction of, of deeper waters into the mixed layer, and heat that's due to mixing processes inside the mixed layer. So again, being the main or leading marine heat wave driver means that you are the process which contributes the most heat during the marine heat wave development. Knowing where and when each of these physical mechanisms appear as a main driver can help us improve marine heat wave predictability. For example, we see here from these plots that ARC exchanges appear to be the main driving mechanism of around 70 to 90% of the marine heat waves in the north of Northwestern Atlantic area during winter and spring mostly, and towards the south or along shore in the summer and fall. The horizontal flows, this line here, they appear to have led uh, about 20 to 80% of marine heat waves almost everywhere in every season, except in the north regions. And the last two rows here represent two small scale processes, the entrainment or else vertical abstraction of deeper waters inside the mixed layer, which are usually small scale processes. And However, they have a non-negligible presence as drivers of marine heat waves, and they appear to dominate them, to dominate events up to 90% close to Nova Scotia. Mixing, which is an even smaller scale process than entrainment, surprisingly enough, appears to have dominated 10 to 30% of mostly winter events in the northwestern um, Atlantic study region. And with this approach, we are basically we're basically constructing a climatology of local scale marine heat wave drivers, which can inform us about potential regional specific events in the future, whose characteristics or causes might, might differ with season and area. So more specifically, the motivation behind the, the study of marine heat wave drivers is not only to improve our chances of predicting these events, but also their impacts on the natural and human systems. However, just like the uncertainties of temperature extremes based on model projections, there are also uncertainties linked with these methods, which have to do again with the spatial temporal frameworks we are interested in, as well as with the technical aspects of the physical process representation. But perhaps the biggest uncertainty here is related to, to the questions we are actually asking. We want to be able to predict marine heat rates, but which time scale or prediction is relevant for fisheries, aquaculture, marine ecosystems, and marine dependent societies every time. And with this, I will take question. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>